Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Extra W Diaries. My name is Justin. So where or where does the Watchtower go from here? I was a witness for 15 years. The first 10 years, not much changed. Some new light here and there, you know how it is. But the last five years, that's when I saw the introduction of the Silver Sword Bible. In fact, I was one of the people handing it out. And for those that are not witnesses, the Silver Sword is a newer version of the New Old Translation, which is the Witnesses translation of the Bible, and it just happened to come in silver. I also saw the introduction of the Blue Square logo, which has become somewhat of an idol in the JW community. And I saw the governing body members become a lot more public in their image. They're almost like celebrities nowadays. Before, people didn't even know the governing body members' names. And since leaving, I've seen the XJW community grow rapidly. And I've seen a lot more news articles and a lot more documentaries that are showing all the things of the Watchtower trying so hard and spending so much donation money to try to keep hidden. So what's coming next? I've got a few predictions. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think is coming. Here's what I think is coming. So I'll start with my most bold prediction. Bold, but at the same time, still very grounded in reality. And I'm not the first person to say this either. But I think within the next five to 10 years, we are going to see a mass exodus. So back in 2017, when I first woke up, the XJW Reddit page, they had less than 15,000 members. In fact, I still remember the huge celebration we had when we crossed that 15,000 milestone. Every single year, the amount of people leaving keeps growing higher and higher and higher. And when you have exponential growth like that, Continually, that's only going to mean one thing. Eventually, that volcano is going to blow, but let's go deeper. I think the majority of people leaving will be my generation, the millennials and the younger Gen Zs for a few reasons. The first reason, my generation has zero issues standing up to our authority and calling them out when they're doing something wrong. My generation also just has less of an issue asking that question, why? And when the answers to that question, why, don't line up with our values, we have less of an issue calling our authority figures out on their BS. Now, in this case, those values would be the values given to us by the Watchtower. So all we're doing here, we're just holding up the Watchtower up to their own values and they don't pass. The second reason is social media. We live in an era right now where we are more connected than ever before. Information travels as fast as it takes for you to think it up, type it out, and push that send button. Social media and the internet have gotten so big that it's too much for humans to handle. So this means that nowadays, a lot of what you come across on the internet, a lot of the videos that you come across on YouTube, a lot of the people that you come across on social media, that's all brought to you by algorithms. Okay, so with all of that in mind, now let's go deep for a second. Because the witnesses over the last five to 10 years, they've gotten a lot more comfortable putting their stuff online. In fact, I can still remember, not that long ago actually, when witnesses were discouraged from even having a Facebook account. So this means that your average Jehovah's Witness of any age is going to have in their algorithm a lot of JW stuff. From looking at pictures of their friends and family, going on vacations, looking at JW kids doing stupid stuff on TikTok, you name it, as long as they keep using that hashtag JW, that algorithm is just gonna keep growing and growing and growing. Then that algorithm is gonna do its thing, whatever it's programmed to do. Which means that if you're a witness and you've got all that stuff in your history, eventually you scroll through the web long enough, you watch enough YouTube videos, you scroll through TikTok long enough, eventually you're gonna run into some extra W content sooner or later. Now, if they're a good witness, they're just gonna swipe it away, scroll past it, whatever. But eventually you're gonna hear something, you're gonna see something, just like in my case, that you just can't ignore. Something that you know with 100% certainty, this is just plain wrong. Then you gotta ask yourself, Hey, is the Watchtower really the good guys here? And again, my generation, we have a little bit less of an issue asking that kind of question. Now, the third reason is that my generation in general is starting to shift away from organized religion. And there's a lot of theories of why that is, but the one that comes up the most often, and the one that definitely resonates with me, it comes down to one word, 
authenticity. The people in my generation put it in plain English, they're seeing through the BS. They see the business side of a lot of these churches. They see that a lot of these religious leaders, they don't practice what they preach behind closed doors. They see that a lot of these religions have a lot of dark secrets. And they see that the way churchgoers interact with each other is anything but authentic. All this fear of being judged. You know how witnesses talk to each other after the meeting. And again, we got to bring up social media. Because if you have a bunch of people leaving, some of those people are going to walk away quietly. But you're always going to have exactly what you're seeing here. People that leave and start speaking out. And the more voices that are out there, the harder it's going to be to ignore. And that just adds more fuel to the mass exodus. Okay, so moving on from the mass exodus. My next prediction is that the Watchtower's public image will rapidly degrade. And social media definitely plays a part here as well. Because as more and more people leave and more and more people speak out about their experiences within the Watchtower, it gives the rest of the world a far more transparent picture of what goes on inside those windowless cannon halls. It's kind of like what Leah Remini did for Scientology when she made her Scientologist series. And it gave the rest of the world a completely different look at the Scientologist lifestyle. Because let's face it, all most people know about the witnesses is that they knock on your door Saturday morning, disturb your breakfast, and they don't celebrate holidays. But there's a lot more to it, isn't there? Another factor that will continue to ruin the Watchtower's public image is the fact that there are more and more lawsuits coming out against them, and those lawsuits are getting press coverage. Not too long ago, we had a news story break about three elders that are being sent to prison because they did not report that they had knowledge of a six-year-old who was being abused. And that abuse went on for 12 years, and they did not report it. In fact, they said they gave the man spiritual counsel. Well, that spiritual counsel didn't work very well, did it? And the more stories that come out like this, the more the results are going to change when people type in the words Jehovah's Witnesses into Google. For years, the Witnesses have had the majority of control over being able to steer their public image. But those times are quickly changing. And as more time goes on, the real truth will continue to come out more and more. And the Watchtower will no longer be able to fully control the narrative. So when the Watchtower tries to say, we don't break up families, people are going to be able to easily find countless examples showing that the Watchtower does do exactly that through their shunning policy. So before I say my next prediction, let me just say I don't wish harm on anybody. And hopefully that's already clear from the videos that I've made so far. Hopefully you've gotten a sense of my personality that I'm not that kind of person. So all that being said, we've got eight governing body members right now, right? They're all pretty elderly. So eventually they're going to start to pass on. And I, again, I don't, I don't, Hope for that, um, not looking forward to that at all. We're on different sides of the track, but a human life is a human life. That's what I believe. Now, the reason I bring that up is because when that happens, as we start to lose governing body members, that is going to cause major shifts in the structure of the religion. Now, explain why. Anyone that's read Crisis of Conscience knows that the governing body and really the entire religion in general is ran surprisingly very much like a democratic government system. Anything the governing body decides has to be voted on, whether small or large. Majority vote wins. And as Crisis of Conscience showed, sometimes those voting decisions, they come down to just one person. So you can see why having one person removed can have a major impact on the dynamic of the entire governing body. If that one person always voted a certain way based on their beliefs and their interpretations, and then that one person is no longer present, that could mean policy changes that were previously held up and voted down can now easily get the votes it needs to move forward. And the more members that pass on, the more that dynamic will shift, causing the entire religion to shift more and more, impacting the lives of all witnesses. And they all have no choice but to follow along. Now, this could mean that the religion eases up some of the restrictions in certain areas, but let's be honest here. The more likely scenario is that things will get more extreme, especially if they are losing members at a rapid rate. Because there's nothing more scary and unpredictable than a person or group of persons in this case who are in a position of power and who fear that they are losing that power. Now, my next prediction will be on the safer side. That's that we will see more court cases where the witnesses are coming out on the losing end. It's already happening now, and it's going to continue happening as more people leave and more people start speaking out. So all those predictions so far have been pretty safe, right? Now let's have a little bit of fun. Let's talk about the technology future of the Jehovah's Witnesses. In the past, the Witnesses have been super slow about adopting new technology, right? I can still remember when Blu-ray discs was just about to come out, 
and the witnesses were still offering videos on tape cassette. But now things have certainly changed. Now the witnesses have their own app. They've got their own animated series with Caleb and Sophia. Even their website has been dramatically revamped from what it was before. So with all these new tech heads moving to Bethel now, you gotta wonder, what's next? And if you think about it, we've already seen them do several things that they previously looked down on other religions for doing. So that means nothing is really off the table here. So could we see a JW web browser, something that automatically filters out any websites that could be considered apostate or any content that could be considered too sexual or too violent? Could we see a JW social network? Can you imagine that? Something that's tied to your publisher card so they know for sure that you are an active witness in good standing. This way, Jehovah's Witnesses all over the world can connect strictly to other Jehovah's Witnesses. And anybody that does or says anything that goes against the Watchtower will immediately have their account locked and their elders notified. Could we see an official JW app to keep track of your time? And at the end of the month, the app will automatically send your time to your Silver Silver Seer. That way, nobody can fudge their hours. Could we see the Watchtower start to put little mini games on the JW website and within the JW app to help boost the indoctrination of the quote unquote young ones? And when it comes to service, let's face it, door to door, it's not super duper effective. So could we see the Watchtower embrace more digital means of trying to recruit people? Maybe they start advertising on the web or maybe they start contacting people through email. Let me not give them any more ideas, but here's the thing. All those things may seem a little bit more far out compared to the other predictions, but if you really, really think about it, it's not that far off. Remember, the direction of the Jehovah's Witnesses is largely directed by the governing body. So as this generation starts to pass on, you'll eventually have a younger generation that's more tech friendly. And no doubt those people will see that technology can be used to further their agenda and have more control over their witnesses. Welcome to 1984, Watchtower edition. So those are my predictions for the Watchtower going forward. Maybe some of them come true. Maybe some of them just stay predictions. But one thing's for sure though, the Watchtower has no problem taking dramatic left turns whenever they feel like it. And any faithful witness has no choice but to follow along. Hold on, strap in, and go wherever the governing body want them to go. They're not in the driver's seat of their life. So what do you think is going to come next? Drop a comment below. Let us know your predictions. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Take it easy on yourself. Much love to you all.